Welcome, everybody. I am here today with Danny. She's Hi, everybody. Trip abroad. Oh, go ahead and say that again, Danny. Sorry. Oh, hello, everybody. So glad to be here. I missed all of you. <clears throat> missed this circle. Yes. So um, just a few announcements. We have our podcast Q&A. For those of you that are attending live, you will get that announcement. But of course, this is posted one day later onto YouTube. So it's on Thursday. So it will have already passed. Um, but for those that you are that are listening later, just know that you can always check out our live podcast Q&A dates on our Reiki Lifestyle calendar. They're at 9 a.m. Pacific. Also, we did time change this week. Um, so it is currently 9.30 a.m. Pacific here, but that might be a different time where you are at because we fell back an hour here in Oregon. Um, and so uh, just an, a reminder about that, that that will affect obviously the podcast tomorrow and then all of our distance Reiki shares until the spring and how that might be different in your state or your country, um, whether or not you do or do not time change. Um, so there's that. Also, we did go ahead and publish our uh, webinar um, that is on November 20th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. That is Reiki for past life healing. And in that webinar, we will be doing inf or we'll have information about how our past lives can affect us and also a guided journey um, with that and for you to explore your past lives. We'll go ahead and put the link in the chat here for those of you that are live. And then we will um, put the link in the description um, or the show notes of the podcast and of YouTube. Um, also, we are actually pretty close to uh, capacity with that already. We are going to up the capacity. Um, at this point. So, but that might take me a day or so. I'm going to try to do that this afternoon. Um, and, um, but if you try to register and it says it doesn't allow you to register for whatever reason, just come back and try it again, because I'm, I'm going to go ahead and up that capacity. Just, you know, I got to go into the settings and all of that, and maybe even contact zoom if it doesn't let me. So there's all of that, that aspect. So um, a couple of the um, questions that we've had, the common question, how much time do we need to reserve for the webinar? It's going to be 90 minutes. Um, so if you cannot make it live or you can't reserve that amount of time, if you register, you will receive the replay for it. So um, just so you know that um, you will be able to watch that even if you can't make it live. Also that day, we are opening up registration for our Next Step Reiki classes for 2025 and our Explore the 12 Heavens Reiki classes for 2025. Um, so those that registration will also go live as well. And we'll have early bird registration um, until I want to say like December 13th, maybe whatever that Sunday is around there, 15th. Um, and then, uh, we will have just regular registration until January 13th or 12th, whatever that Sunday is. Um, I should have those dates in front of me. Sorry. I'll put all of that in, into the description as well. Um, but the registration links are not open yet. They open on November 20th, the same day as the webinar. Okay. I think that's good for announcements right now. Um, and Today here in the United States is the elections. Um, and so it has been a very loud election season. So we are actually going to take a break, a little bit of a break from our normally scheduled programming. We've been talking about um, different aspects of how Reiki journey techniques can help and just go into time, a time of some self-care a time of some stress release, some anxiety reduction. Um, it kind of feels like we are right now at the bottom of an exhale and about to breathe back in is kind of when I was like listening around it this morning, that feels kind of like the energy that we have right now. I'm not going to talk too much about the elections. I'm going to talk about how Reiki can use that, help us during these kind of big world events. 
I also am going to ask that in the chat. We don't have any talk of politics. We will spend time to send Reiki to the election. Um, also in the comments it, uh, later on down the road, if we could refrain from that as well, that would be great. But especially in this place, we always keep this a safe place. We always keep this a grounded place. And so we're just going to lean into the Reiki energy here today. So um, that's our plan. And we will also have a, um, a guided Reiki journey for that stress release, for that anxiety reduction, all of the things that we know that Reiki is kind of one of its biggest um, things that it's known for, right? When we first talk about Reiki, when we first learn about Reiki, one of the very first things that we say is that it's a Japanese technique for stress reduction, right? It's a, known as a stress reduction technique. We also know that it helps reduce anxiety and it helps reduce pain. And in the areas of Reiki, those are the places that we actually have the most research around that um, we've had research done. And all of these studies can be found on the Center for Reiki Research. Um, they have the studies published through their website. And um, so we know that there has been studies that have shown that it has reduced pain through different kinds of surgeries, such as hip replacement, knee replacement, um, breast cancer surgeries. We know that it has reduced anxiety. Um, these are, you know, the, the pain and the anxiety, of course, is the um, anecdotal av evidence with it. Also, having said that, they have done controlled studies where they offer patients Reiki, no Reiki, and also sham Reiki is what they call when they go through the motions of Reiki. However, they're not Reiki attuned. And so they, um, you know, have that control with it in the different studies. So we know that touch therapy helps a little bit, but it's definitely been shown that the patients who receive Reiki have um, more benefit from for them in all different capacities. The other place that it has uh, evidence and research around is recovery. Um, so recovery from surgery, recovery from illness, and then also medication uptake. So uh, patients have to or don't have to take medication um, as long as people who are not receiving Reiki. So again, you can go to the Center for Reiki Research to find out more about that. Um, so but when it comes down to it, all of us have experienced Reiki that are here. I would say probably almost all of us have experienced Reiki. We know that it helps us with our stress. We know that it helps us with our anxiety. We know that it can help us with pain. It helps us leaving more relaxed. I know for me, it helps me feel more grounded. Um, that's another really big piece of it and another place that I really use Reiki um, for myself is to help me feel more grounded and more in my body in a more peaceful way. So the other aspect of it in this time frame, we can have a lot of empathic stress, right? So many of us that are in energy medicine or called to energy medicine, we are empathic. Some of us are empaths, right? Where everything affects us so deeply. We can feel the energy of people so deeply. And then, you know, just like anything else, there is a spectrum with it where even though I would not say that I'm an empath to the level that some of you probably are, I would say that I am empathic. And so I can collect or I can pick up on the stress of people around me or the different energy of people around me. But I can also pick up on that empathic. Um, and, or the collective stress that can be a part of our world when we have different events that are happening, when we have days like today where we are really feeling this collective again, that that feeling that we might have right now of that anticipation, all of these things that can um, come with a big world event, or for us, it's a big event in our country. Um, so there's that empathic stress. This is another place that Reiki is super helpful with because what Reiki does is it fills us up. It's this 
external energy that can help fill up our life force and our vitality. Um, and so it fills us up so that we can, it's almost like that, you know, putting on your own oxygen mask on a plane, right? You have to put yours on so that then you can be in a position where you can maybe help others or just even live your life from a better place of wellness for yourself and for those around you. So it helps us with our life force and our vitality. And when we have these things that really ping our empathy or maybe pull on us a bit or maybe make us feel depleted because we have this empathic stress or we have this big stuff going on in our life, that filling up of our cup, that putting on of our own oxygen masks allows us to live our, play, live our lives from a different perspective. Reiki also can really help as a filter. So it can help our auric field, right? It can help our auric field is that energetic field that is around us. And I always think of Reiki kind of as that as well, or at least one of the things that I can have my intentions for or use it for to also have it as a part of that field around me, almost to even protect my auric field or also fill up um, my auric field. From a biofield perspective, Reiki energy is helping to um, entrain that Schumann resonance that is around us and all things to that entrainment of that ener energetic aspect of Reiki energy. So there's those aspects that Reiki can help us with in times like today or when we're in different stressful situations or there's other world events that might be taking place that can really, you know, affect us as well. It also helps with our nervous system. So we had Anne Baldwin on the podcast recently. That one was released, right? Yeah, I think. Yeah. Okay. So it's sorry. It's hard to keep track of the schedule sometimes. So we had Anne Baldwin on the podcast recently who just wrote an, a new book about the vagus nerve and how Reiki can help us so much with the vagus nerve, which helps us with our parasympathetic nervous system. That is the rest and relax side of our nervous system, as opposed to the sympathetic nervous system, which is the fight or flight or freeze, you know, I think there's also a few other F's that have been added to that as well. But that is that really, um, I, you know, for me and my body, I can just feel it like that, that tension and how Reiki and well, as well as breathing, as well as meditation, as well as mindfulness, all of these things can help within our nervous system as well. So again, calming that body down, filling up with that life force uh, and vitality, taking care of our own energy, trying to help us release that empathic stress, realizing what is ours, what is theirs, you know, picking up on that, that observing and not absorbing aspect. Reiki energy helps with all of these things. And then the other place that I find that Reiki can help so much when we are in these positions is that it can help us to go from feeling helpless to helpful. And I know we've talked about that quite a bit, or as Colleen says, it's something I can do, right? This is something I can do because we can't fix all the world's problems. Um, we can't be a part of the solution for every single thing um, that occurs in this world, you know, and a part of me thinks that we weren't meant to see it all anyways. And that really can contribute to how it can feel for us when we feel that weight of the world on our shoulders, because I think so many of us are called to this work because we do want to help, whether it's just for ourselves or whether it's for other people, we are called to this work because we want to be a part of the solution, right? We want to help with more peace, more love, more unity on the planet, in our own lives, in our communities, all of those kinds of aspects that we um, might be called to within, within Reiki energy or why we might have been called to it in the first place. And so 
one thing that we can do is we can send Reiki. We can send Reiki for peace. We can send Reiki for love. We can send Reiki for unity. We can send Reiki um, to people so that it's, it. you know, if there's something happening that, you know, I always say when I'm in that position of sending Reiki, it's like, can can they just feel that light for just a moment, right? Like that can be so helpful when you're in really hard and stressful um, uh, places in, in your life. And so in a day like today too, how can you send Reiki so that you, you can feel like you are doing something that is helpful? And I know that it is a form of activism as well, because again, we can't, we can't change everything in the world. We can't fix everything in the world. And so it is another way that we can contribute into um, the different aspects of what we want to see in the world. And so I know for me, I do feel more helpful when I'm spending time and sending Reiki um, to different things. So those are all the ways that Reiki can help. Spending time in self-Reiki, spending time in self-care. Seems like today, you know, for many of us, we might have already gone out and voted. We may have already voted, depending on how it works for your state. You may still have that on your to-do list. Um, but in what you can do in this moment and just for a little bit of time is just go into that self-care, give yourself Reiki. We're going to do a guided meditation, which can be helpful too, because then it takes it off of your plate of like, okay, how do I do this? That mind that can continue to kind of roll around in your head. Um, sometimes when it's guided by somebody else that takes that off of your plate, which can be helpful as well. Um, and so, but being in that self-care, helping yourself a little bit, again, it's another level of putting on that oxygen mask for yourself so that when you go out, you can be full of life force and vitality and whether that's just to your family or whether that's to com your community or whether that's to even, you know, the world, um, that, um, you, that can be a part of another place where this, this helps. And sometimes that can be five minutes. Sometimes, you know, when we go into this guided meditation, it's closer to 20. Sometimes it's longer than that. Self-care looks so many different ways. And it is um, a, an extremely and vitally important thing for us to do. And I know sometimes we can be really busy. Some of you are even joining us from work. Um, and so you just have to allow the energy to wash over you, the words to wash over you while you're working, but that counts too. That matters too. And so it looks all different ways. And one thing, um, I did forget to, uh, mention another way that Reiki really helps is in that energetic balance in our chakras. And so filling up with those colors in our chakras, releasing blocks in our chakras, um, in all different ways and the ways that those look and manifest in our lives. That's another place, you know, when we're talking about our, our auric field, talking about that energetic piece to us as um, beings here on this planet, we all have those energetic, uh, those energetic pieces to us that it really also can help within our chakra systems and keeping that energy moving and flowing. And sometimes you know, we can have our chakras that might even feel dim or they might feel blocked and Reiki helps release anything that needs to be released in there and in our bodies in general. And it also um, helps to bring in that Reiki energy helps to bring in our colors, fill those colors, make that vibrancy within our colors return. Um, so there's, there's those things as well. Then what we will do too, as a part of the meditation is that we are going to send group Reiki, um, to just peace today. As I said, we're going to keep it a, um, kind of just a, an overarching theme. And I think that peace is something that we all want and that we know that we can contribute to. And so we're going to send group Reiki to that today. So that'll be a part of the meditation as well. Danny, is there anything that you'd like to add? 
That's all really good. Um, I was also thinking you might have mentioned this. I was um, busy in chat, but um, but I also really um, charged my grid today, my Reiki grid, um, and used distance Reiki too. Uh, so if you have a grid or if you don't even have a grid, a crystal or something that's important to you, you can send Reiki to that as well. And to me, I don't know. This gives me energy and, and we are resilient. So no matter what today brings or this week brings, I mean, we're still going to be together. We're still going to meet next week and, and just belief. And I just thinking in the crown chakra for me is um, letting that expand. So. Thanks, Danny. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good point. That's what I love about this group is that we come together in circle and we've been through a lot in the last four years together um because this started in march of 2020 and this circle and this group has been together a lot um through a lot in these last four years and i know we've had people come and go and all of that but at the same time one thing that remains constant is that we are all here together and that's a beautiful piece of humanity and i love that we are here we're international. We're an international group. We're here together through all of the trials and tribulations that we've been through. And um, that's the piece that I choose to believe in. And we just are so grateful for all of you and this circle together. And those that listen later um, and uh, that join us, you know, through YouTube or through the podcast. Um, just, yeah, thank you. Because I do always feel like this is such a grounded space, that community aspect of it. Um, really is so important because it just reminds us through all of these things. I mean, through the height of COVID and stress with that, and um, it just reminds us that we're all here together and we have this beautiful community that we can join together in, in love. This is, you know, the frequencies of love and um, love consciousness and Reiki helps us to do that as well. And I just think that that's another really beautiful piece of it. So thanks, Danny. Yeah, it's a good reminder.